Have you ever done a visual approach and asked yourself, am I too high or too low? Or flown an airplane with a basic airspeed indicator and ever asked, what's my true airspeed? Stick around because I'm going to answer those questions and I'm going to show you some cool tricks that you can do with the CJ4 working title mod. This first trick is a way to figure true airspeed. This works best at high altitudes in jet aircraft. Take the first three digits of your flight level, so in this case 400, half of that is 200, add that 200 to your indicated airspeed, that would be 423 knots true airspeed. And if we look over here, we can see our true airspeed is 420 knots. It's not perfect, but it does get pretty close. I've seen it be as off by as much as 20 knots. But if you don't have a way to calculate true airspeed and it's not given in the airplane you're flying, this is an easy way to estimate it, all depending on outside conditions. But it will get you in the ballpark just like this method used for propeller airplanes down low. For this method, take your altitude in thousands. So 9,000, we'll say that's 9.0. Multiply that by 2%, that's 0.18. So we're going to add that to our indicated airspeed. We're going to take 1.18 times 145 knots. And that answer comes out to 171 knots. It's not exact, but it's close. But if you're flying in an airplane without a true airspeed indication like this one, you'll still be able to figure out your true airspeed. For this trick, we have two parts. One part to figure out how high we need to be at a certain distance and another part once we figure that how fast we're going to descend remember 300 feet per nautical mile we're currently four nautical miles from the runway four times 300 is 1200 feet plus the field elevation of a thousand is 2200 feet at three miles that would be 900 feet above the ground plus the field elevation of a thousand be 1900 feet so at three miles right there we want to be at 1900 feet we are slightly above the glide path. I do have a visual approach loaded in here. When you load in the visual approach with the working title mod, it will give you a glide path, so you will get the indication there like this. As long as we hit one of those points, like three mile, four mile, or five mile, whatever distance at that altitude, the next thing we need to figure out is how fast do we need to descend. To do that, look at our ground speed. 110 knots, approximately. Take 110 divided by two, that's 55. Add a zero to that, that's 550. They send at 550 feet per minute. And that was a lot to take in. We're gonna try it one more time in a slower airplane. The elevation at this airport is 900 feet. We're 3.3 nautical miles away. So at three nautical miles, that's 300 feet per nautical mile. That's 900 feet plus the field elevation is 1800 feet. So right there at three nautical miles, our altimeter reads 1800 feet. The next thing we need to do is look at ground speed. Ground speed is 96. You can round that to 100 if you like. Half of that is 50. Add a zero. Descend at 500 feet per minute. And we can check ourselves at one nautical mile. Remember, 300 feet per nautical mile. So 300 times one is 300 plus the field elevation, 900 is 1200 feet. Right there is 1200 feet. And we've been descending at approximately 500 feet per minute. Did you know you can request ATIS, METARs, and TAFs? You can with the working title mod for the CJ4. To do so, go to Index, then Data Link, then click Weather, then on the left side, click Request, and here there's six blanks. You can type in six different airport identifiers and get weather for each. This is terminal weather, so this is going to be a METAR. So just type in each location. I'm going to do Teterboro, Los Angeles, and Minneapolis, St. Paul. Then press send. And in the real airplane, we would go back to the legs page or whatever, and we would get a message when the weather comes up. But this works a lot faster. So to get the weather, go back to index and data link, select weather. Now we got terminal weather and we're going to select view and then select which weather you want to look at. And here we can see when the report was made, the winds are 0403, visibility is one and three quarter mile, light rain mist, overcast 500. And when you're done reading the weather that you want, press return, select the next station, and then repeat to read all the stations that you selected. So the METAR will just give us the weather for the airport, but say we want more specific information like digital ATIS. 
we go back to data link then select ATIS the destination is Teterboro so that comes up by default but you can also change it which I will show you in just a second so to request this weather you just press send there it says received now we can click ATIS and there's the ATIS for Teterboro. So here we can see the information. It's information Romeo. That's what we would tell approach or tower to let them know that we have the latest weather for the airport. And also on the ATIS, we'll get the approach in use and the runway in use all in one place. So we have the ATIS for Teterboro. Let's say for some reason we want to go to another airport and we want to request the ATIS at another airport. This is how we do that. So you go back to the index page, data link, and then click on ATIS, and it will bring you to this page right here. Simply type in the identifier of the airport you want to go to and put it up under airport. When you're done, press send. It says received. Then you would press, I did this out of order right there, the ATIS button. And you can see San Francisco ATIS information x-ray time 0456 Zulu followed by the rest of the weather. If this is something you would like to see explained, METARs, TAFs, and how to decode them, please comment below. And I'll make that video in the future. This one's not really a trick, it's just a helpful hint. Sometimes I play flight sim, I leave the room, come back, and the airplane's 200 miles past the destination. But this could be used in real life because it has happened that flight crews have flown past their destination. And it won't get any more specific than that. And no, it wasn't me or anybody that I know. So what we can do is draw a hold, select the destination, it'll go into the scratch pad, go index, hold, and then place that destination on the five blocks. And that will get us to this page. So I decide I want to hold inbound on the 075 degree radial left hand turns. I can execute that, and now I have a hold in front of me. If I leave the room, come back, the airplane's not going to be 200 miles from the destination. It's going to be holding over Teterboro indefinitely or, or until it runs out of gas. So instead of the airplane flying into oblivion going past the destination, it will hold like this. And it wasn't going to say anything else about it, but if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about where this actually happened would have been helpful, think Northwest Airlines Airbus 320 Minneapolis in 2009. Here's one of two ways to go direct. Select a fix, put it on top of the magenta fix, hit execute. Right there makes us go direct to the fix. The other way is to press the direct button and then select the fix you want to go direct to and then hit execute. Simple, but there are two ways to go direct. So instead of going direct, what if we're playing VATSIM and we're getting vectors to final? After selecting the approach, we have an easy way to do that. Simply select a fix outside the final approach fix, and then go to legs page one, and place that fix where you see the blue text. That will essentially draw a final approach course. If you would have put that where the pink is, it would have taken you direct to it. We don't want that. The next step, whatever heading they give you, turn the heading bug to that, select heading on the flight guidance panel, and since you're getting vectors to final, you can go ahead and press nav. But this only works with the working title mod right now. So now we're on our heading to intercept the final approach course. When we get to the final approach course, nav will go up to where the green heading is and become active. And fly the final approach course like this. This tip can be used in any airplane and that is set the heading bug to the runway heading that you're going to be taking off from. You can see on the MFD, runway 4 is to our right. It's a 90 degree turn. But you can also see runway 35 to our left, but if you pull onto this runway under the right circumstances, you're not going to see either runway number, and it would be very easy to take off on the wrong runway. So here I've lined up on runway 35. Had no idea it was the wrong runway, well, I did, but for this example. But we can tell it's not the correct runway because the heading bug is off our, to our right. And the flight director does not work correctly on this. If it did work correctly, 
the flight director would be indicating a turn to the right when we're lined up on the runway, which is the incorrect runway. When the flight director is working correctly, when we're on the correct runway, the flight director will be wings level. It will work correctly with the working title mod, but we have the heading bug as a backup. But unfortunately with the default aircraft, the flight director only works correctly when you have the autopilot turned on. And this is one that I do use in real life, and unfortunately taking off on the wrong runway does happen. And last of all, I use this in Flight Sim 2020. You can make your altitude selection, heading selection, go at twice the rate. You can see the altitude selector. Here is no left shift held, and here it is with the left shift held. You can see it going by 200. Hope you found some of these tips helpful. Check out the description. All the ones that had to do with math and the, like the 300 feet per nautical mile. I'll list all those out in the description. Don't hesitate to ask questions if you have any. Feel free to ask. If you take the time to write them, I'll take the time to answer.